check, check, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, no, one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Uh, everyone, um, so I see the standing room only towards the back. We do have an overflow in lecture hall two next door and also downstairs in classroom A. So um, standing around the walls is um, it's a fire hazard. So please try to use the overflow spaces. Lecture hall two next door and classroom A downstairs. We appreciate the turnout, though. It's a beautiful turnout.
Good evening, everyone. Let's try that again. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 10th annual Dr. Philip Pomerantz Distinguished Lectureship. It's been, this is our 10th one. When we, when we first did the first one in 2009, we weren't sure how much longer they'd go on, yet here we are. So thank you all for being here tonight. We're looking forward to a really good night. Um, before we um, get to our introductions and to our speaker, I'd like to introduce a few of the dignitaries who are in the room with us today. Uh, starting with folks from Western U, including our own Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Richard Bond. <laughs> the Treasurer of our Board of Trustees, Dr. Ethan Allen. <laughs> Dr. Gary Gugelchuk, our Provost and Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> Dr. Diane Abraham, our Vice President for Advancement. Dr. David Barron, our Vice President of Clinical and External Relations. And of course our deans, Dr. Steven Fredrickson of the College of Dental Medicine. Dr. Stephanie Bolin, Dean of the College of Health Sciences. Dr. Mary Lopez, Dean of the College of Graduate Nursing. and all the members of the Mary Lopez Fan Club. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Michelle Baudry of the Graduate College of Biomedical Sciences. <laughs> and Dr. Daniel Robinson of the College of Pharmacy. <laughs> and all of Dan's groupies, so thank you very much. So we have another very special guest with us tonight and I know that you'll join me in a tribute to her. We have with us uh, Mrs. Harriet Pomerantz who is here. I have it on very good authority that Mrs. Pomerantz had a birthday yesterday. So, I hope you will join me in a beautiful and stirring rendition of Happy Birthday, starting about here. Happy Birthday. Well done. Well done. Thank you all very much. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce the president of Western University of Health Sciences, Dr. Daniel Wilson. Well, it's tough to follow a happy birthday <laughs> intro. Hello, Oregon. <laughs> did you guys sing up north? You did, okay, very good. We couldn't hear you down here. <laughs> so good evening and welcome to the, the, the Pumerantz Lectureship, the 10th annual lectureship. I'm happy all of you, especially so many of our students, apparently weighted toward nursing and pharmacy <laughs> for to be with us this evening. And I look forward to the presentation by our guest speaker, Professor Yi Guang Tang, who uh, will have some very remarkable educational and entertaining information to share. This lecture is endowed by the generous support of the Sakaria family of Orange, California. And I would like you to please help me thank Dr. Elaine Sicaria, who is here with us tonight. <laughs> the Sicaria family deeply believe in the mission and future of Western University of Health Sciences. This endowment helps ensure that the philosophy of humanistic science upon which Western U was founded is reinforced and expounded by a special lecture each year. Though Dr. Philip Pomerantz no longer is with us, at least in person, Phil's humanistic spirit and commitment live on 
in all of the ways we strive and in all of our accom accomplishments as an institution. It's a special treat that members of his family are here with us tonight, including, of course, our birthday uh, girl, uh, Harriet, and uh, Brigida, Richard, Brigida's mother. I'm not sure if there are other members of the family, but thank you all for your wonderful support to this institution. <laughs> Our speaker this year is a shining example of what the university represents and what the Sakaria Lectureship uh, Endowment supports. Professor Tang studies how experience becomes cultural learning via affect, attention, emotion, decision-making, self-control, health, and well-being. Uh, to my ears as a psychiatrist and anthropologist, this is music, you know, this is wonderful stuff. He uses psychosocial, physiological, neuroimaging, and genetics to analyze important correlations. He developed a novel preventative intervention, integrative body-mind training, which from the 1990s on, he studied in large randomized clinical trials in both healthy and uh, patient populations. His work affirms that brief training, not good for the psychiatric business, if, if you can briefly train people. You know, we, we prefer years and years of, of, of treatment. But you're interested in reducing healthcare costs, too, so that's, it's important that we are, 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 are briefer in our interventions. He affirms that brief training significantly reduces stress hormones, improves immune function, cognitive performance, brain plasticity, and health adaptation. Do you have time in your schedule in the next few weeks for a consultation? <laughs> <laughs> He's published eight books, including Brain-Based Learning and Education, the Neuroscience of Mindfulness Meditation, and How the Body and Mind Work Together to Change Behavior. He's published more than 300 peer-reviewed articles in such journals as Nature Reviews Neuroscience, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Trends in Cognitive Sciences, as well as many contributions to the general media on BBC, the Associated Press, Reuters, Time, Time Magazine, uh, The New York Times, NPR, and so on. He's received multiple awards, including the NIH Cutting Edge Award. Dr. Tang earned his PhD in Cognitive Neuroscience and Neuroimaging from Dalian University in Northeast China, a very fine university, as well as further work at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Psychology, one of the most robust and productive research institutes in the world. He currently is the Presidential Endowed Chair in Neuroscience and Professor of Psychological Sciences and Internal Medicine at Texas Tech University, as well as, this is wonderful, as well as the Presence Fellow, Presence as in Mindfulness Fellow, in the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences at Stanford. Please welcome Professor Tang. Thank you for <coughs> wonderful introduction, Dr. Wilson. And uh, it's my great honor to be here. Yeah, it's my great honor to be here and uh, share my work with you. But before we start, I want to ask one question to see how you respond. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. This response means not only your body, but also your mind is here. <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's wonderful. Now we can start. <laughs> So this talk actually is pretty simple. 
Yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, we pay lots of money for health care insurance, and um, many people also had a feeling so they do not get high quality of health care they have expected. So I will talk about as one model called integrated health. Then I use neuroimaging finding to provide evidence to support this proposal. You can disagree with me because it's a discussion. I share the evidence with you. So I, when I, uh, since my interaction with Western University colleagues, students, faculties, leaders, I have a feeling. So the integrated health may provide an opportunity for Western University to be a world leader in training the next generation of healthcare and a medical professional. But we should use a novel neuroscience evidence-based integrated health program. So I'm going to start. So this is the conventional medicine model. We all know. So one thing we believe, so symptom relief is equal to the health and the well-being. Of course, it's not 100% correct. But in all the mainstream medical school, we use this model. So you look at the, this part, the patient must have mindset that physician should fix the problem, right, and the symptom, then give them health back. So this is not the positive, responsible, engaged mindset, attitude, and action. So this is the current situation based on this model. I want to, I want to see this one. About 50 years ago, only 2 to 3% GDP for healthcare and medical spending. But right now, almost 20%. So some people joke, it's just a joke. It's not healthcare. We pay attention to sick care. So fortunately, yeah, people are hungry for this new model, but fortunately, this integrated health model has been widely accepted, including our neighbor, UC system, right? So reducing medical expense actually affect the economy and the future. So if you think we can save more money for education, for research, for other benefit. So the next model, the next part that we call the complementary alternative health care, this model. So some people talk uh, complementary alternative medicine, also the traditional model. So look at uh, how many US population use it, are using it. So even though last year WHO rebranded their unit to go to the traditional complementary integrated medicine. So NIH has uh, one funding institution called NCCIH that only focus on this part, funding. We just a new director uh, this month. So the third part, we're talking about the lifestyle, self-care, so including the lots of method. It emphasizes our own responsibility, awareness, and the care action to maintain the health. So summary, you will find the three components they all focus on self-regulation of our body, our mind, and the behavior, in addition to the conventional medication model. So physician treat patient as a whole, and we take our responsibility. So they may define actually the relationship between the practitioner and the patient by focusing on the whole person, whole community. So how to start for this one? So this is our body, homeostasis system. So you will find how we respond to internal, external change. Then our body, brain, mind, self-regulate ourselves to adapt to the change through the nervous system and the endocrine system. So the nervous system actually has two parts. Central nervous system, our brain, spinal cord, 
and autonomic nervous system. We call it NAS, CNS. So the NAS also has a sympathetic, parasympathetic. So they work together. So in general, we use a passive habitual regulation to respond outside the world. But right now, we want to bring attention, we have an innate capacity to exert a self-directed top-down regulation, such as many, many psychophysiological index. We can do that. So this is a, like a, a graph to show you how the brain, how the sympathetic, parasympathetic influence the internal organs and the immune function, stress hormone. So the program related to the IH we call the integral health. So should target the two system, all regulation. Number one, CNS, number two, autonomic. You look at this one, just another summary. So the sympathetic, parasympathetic. So you, when you target, they show the brain change marker. When you focus on physiology, they show the brain body marker. So in together, you find the body, mind all change that support behavior change. So in general, I will use one word called a balance of self-organized homeostasis system. Monitoring, awareness, identify the problem issue, then regulating, become a healthy human being. Um, we focus on this one, how to rebalance and optimize the homeostasis system and improve innate self-regulation ability through normal method. Tonight, I only talk about one thing called the IBMT, I develop. So assuming one person has a problem, has an issue, so they lose the balance. Okay, back. So the three possible program I just give you an idea, but we focus on number three. So number one, we're talking about the neuroscience-based presence program for quality care. You look at the, this part, you will understand. This is the daily life for medical professionals. So the human error because of high intense workload, right? So we use this one, actually we can help optimize brain functioning in the medical professional produce quality care. The second one, we can use a neuroscience-based prevention and treatment for optimal lifestyle self-care. So the, the key part is the self-awareness training, so can change behavior habit effectively. So I will give example later. So tonight, we'll only focus on this one. <coughs> so this one, I I provide the behavior, physiology, brain plasticity evidence to support we can improve our self-regulation ability to really change behavior and help symptom, symptom relief and treat mental disorder. So why I use this method because it's about 20 years ago. When I was working in medical school, working with a patient. So just a, just a little bit of the key words. I use one word called the mindfulness training. Actually, it's from the review in the Western world. Originally, I called it the integrated body-mind training. But the review, the editor, only want to label this method as mindfulness. It's totally fine for me. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But I want to show you something here. So people, people heard a lot about the mindfulness, you know, your mind, mindful, mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? So in general, in definition, they talk about uh, this one. Non-judgmental attention to experience in the present moment is very abstract. It seems that you involve the self-regulation of our thoughts, emotion, sensation, right? In practice, it involves both body-mind training. Many, many scholars are still arguing in debate about definition. But for me, most important thing is how to translate this work into the patient group, into the healthcare system. I want to show you one thing since we have so many 
people. Very fun, very fun. Have fun. So we add numbers together. We do together. We need to speak aloud for the answer. I'll show you. So like this one, we will speak 1,000 together, right? Then we we'll add the next number, speak out the answer, 1,040. Got it? Okay. Let's do it. Have fun. Star. Who said a fire seven? It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It is wrong. So this is a uh, mindfulness. So mindfulness help noticing new things. Why we just follow the pattern? So your mind lose attention, right? Follow the pattern. So in daily life, they happen. This is a mindfulness. So when we are mindless, we hold our perspective still, fixed. And we respond in a, in a very automatic and habitual way. So we lose it. But in reality, all uncertain. So you get an idea. You're laughing, right? Get an idea. So we go to the scientific research. So I'm going to cover attention control, cognitive performance, emotion regulation, stress hormone immune function, plasticity, and I give two examples, one addiction, one anxiety depression. So this is the first concept. So this IBM T can induce the self-directed neural plasticity, means the change the brain structure and the function. So the brain means a few hours can really change. So how they change? So this self-directed neural plasticity refer to the regulation of our own neural network activity through improving effortful and effortless self-regulation. Self-regulation is sometimes called self-control. So we use self-control because it's short, right? OK, so this is a study research design when we start. So you will find that we use a physiology matter like cortisol, high reliability. We use neuroimaging fMRI using EEG, MEG, PET scan. So we start from community, we measure many things. Why genetic analysis, we try to figure out if this method feeds a different individual. Actually, not any method can feed everybody. So they're responder, no responder. So then we work with the patient population. So this is the core concept. So let's talk about our attention self-control network. Interesting, so attention has three parts. So one part called the executive attention share with the brain circuit of self-control, mainly in the anterior singular cortex here, midline, and the media prefrontal cortex. Remember, around here is our self-control center, also the executive attention center. So training this two part is very important because just a minute ago you lose attention because you follow the rhythm, right? So this ability is really important in life. So if a person has a problem in attention self-control, so you will find many, many mental disorder. So improving attention self-control actually could help diverse problem mental disorder based on many research. So this is the research literature publication related to the mindfulness in the health and the patient population. So the significant increase is the last two decades. Then we, we, uh, we have a one special issue on the social cognitive neuro affecting neuroscience, talking about the mindfulness neuroscience, how they change the brain, change the behavior. 
So this is uh, just the example about the design. So in the design, uh, like the RCT design called a random, uh, randomized clinical trial. So we use the IBMT as uh, experiment group, relaxation training therapy as uh, control, active control. So we do the five session, or five day, 20 minutes per session. Why? Because this is the undergrad population. They only can tolerate the five session, 20 minutes <laughs> per night. They say they're so busy, yeah. So we measure the attention, emotion, whatever, physiology, brain, yeah. So the first thing we find that they actually five 20 minute session improve attention significant. I explained to you the slides. So this is the efficiency of network. We use a time. You use a shorter time means you can use a shorter time to solve the conflict, so you are more efficient, right? So experimental group is the IBMT, mindfulness, controls realization training. So we find the IBMT use a shorter time, so they are more efficient. What's others? Alert means, I do this one, so you alert here, right? Then you try to target the where called the orienting. Then you find that reality is different from expectation, they call the so, conflict. So then, five session. So half of the emotion you find before and after IBMT, all the negative emotion goes down. Anger, confusion, depression, fatigue. Only the positive one, vigor and activity, increase. Give idea. Another matter, same story. Positive, negative uh, effect. So IBMT, RT group, same. Then we go to the objective marker, because people can argue, you need a self-report, I want to see the real data objectively. So we use the stress hormone, cortisol from saliva. So we got uh, after five sessions, you get a three minutes stress, then you get a 20 minutes post-stress measure the saliva here, here, three times. Why 20 minutes? Because 20 minutes means you go to the peak cortisol. The immune function also in that window. So let's look at data. You will find, okay, pre-stress means after five sessions. So the IBMT group already show less stress, but not significant in the baseline. However, after stress, all group increase but IBMT group improves slower, significant. 20 minutes peak, we still increase, then the IBMT increase slower. If you use the no control, like a wait list, without any tra uh, treatment, so they go higher, even higher. So the same story, if we go to the immune function, so I will talk to the waiter. So you go to immune function, you will find Beginning IBMT after five sessions already have a high immune function, but not significant. Then you go to the stress, you put this one. So why here you, you find that relaxation training goes down within the 20 minutes window, but the IBMT still show higher immune function. So why, when could we change the baseline? If we change the baseline day life, so every day, so people show the lower cortisol, the higher immune function, they will be have a huge benefit for the health and well-being. So I show you this one. So this is a study called a dose-dependent fashion from the one to four week, five session to 20 session. We find around the 20 session, we can significantly change your baseline stress hormone level you are in a very low level hormone, a stress hormone. Same story for the immune function, still need 20 sessions, you really change the baseline. Okay, so this is a summary. Stress, we know there are lots of side effects. If you can really reduce stress within 10 hours, change the baseline stress level and immune function, certainly has a huge benefit. So we have other study, I will not report here, so we found uh, improve many cognitive functioning, memory, capacity, creativity, problem solving. You know, many mental disorders, 
they suffer from diverse cognitive function, cognitive problem. So they also change this way. So the last part, I think I want to go to the brain change. So fire session, so fire session change brain function, I want to show you this one first. So when people do nothing, do nothing, no external task, just sit down there. So this is our brain. So our brain is very active. Why? Because you have a mind wandering. Your mind is always active to detect the environment. Then you have a wandering mind today, tomorrow, past, all there. Occupy so many resources. Could we use it? five or 20 minutes to reduce this more activity so the brain can be quiet, save more energy and resource. So this is the five session, 20 minute session. You will find brains quite a lot, right? Importantly here, so brain is still active in a self-control center, in a self-awareness center, this is the reward center, your reward center inside. So give you an idea, so brain in a better self-control, awareness, and reward mood, so they save lots of capacity. So then we talk about if we do longer from five session to 10 session, can we change brain even further? So we find they change actually, change the brain structure. So this is from the 10 session in total five hours. You will find they change here. They change here. So I'll show you a bigger one. You will find significant change in the midline, midline of the prefrontal and to single cortex. You will find many, many changes, especially here. So the structure connected two hemispheres. So the two hemispheres are more, are more efficient to processing information after 10 sessions. So then we even go further to show you. So what's the change track? So we use another technique, we find they start changing to the here, self-control, they go to the reward center, striatum, then they go to the self-awareness. So this is the fiber, the white matter. So we, we also find that when brain structure change, they actually correlate with the emotion regulation. It means your brain rewire that support a better self-control in emotion domain. Last question, after we published, uh, so we ask, uh, why only five, se uh, 10 sessions, you can see, we can significantly change the brain structure in a short time. So I will show you this one. You know the neuron, the dendritic. So we pay attention to the axon, axon here, then melanation here. We use the ABRD as a index because it's an imaging. So we can see if the axon contribute or myelination contribute to structure change. So then we find, I didn't show you a picture, I, I will find five session, five session, the 10 session actually increase Y matter through only axon change. But the 20 session, they change both myelination and axon. So they contribute this way. So if they do shorter time, they only change the axon density, communicate with the other neuron. If you go to the longer, they change both. So in the molecular level, we find that evidence how this works. If you look at the other training, like computer training, they take a hundred hours training, they only change the axon, not the melanation. Axon melanation actually related to the many, many mental disorders. So this is a summary slides. So we change brain because the brain has a problem that show lots of a structure function change. So if we can have a brain health, then we have a real health. Okay, I want to move a little bit fast to save more time for a question. So I will speak like, like America, move faster. <laughs> so, does body and the mind work together for this positive change? Only brain or body also support. So in the first one, we find, okay, the brain always supports the physiology. Physiology always leads to the brain, right? You cannot separate. So this is a study, I, sh I show you. So still five sessions. 
certainly. So we use the skin conductance response, you know, skin conductance. So we also use the high wave variability because of two is the index of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic activity. So usually, so I show you this one. So this blue is the experimental group, and the red is the control. So relaxation training is the IDMP. So in general, lower skin conduction response means you're more relaxed, more calm. So you will find that IDMP game is better, but the relaxation training also helps. So the lower part is around uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So this is why 20 minutes really works. So the high variability means you have a high, high frequency HRV. Higher means more relaxed, more calm. So this is why IDMP is higher. Meditation also works still around uh, 15 to 20 minutes window. It means it's dynamic when you get in. So then we use the EEG to measure brain wave. Brain wave around the here, middle and brain wave, then high variability. So body and the mind. So they correlate beautifully, positively. So body and mind interact to maintain the state, to optimize your central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So this is summary. So I, I talk about the, the attention control, emotion regulation, but I, don't I did not talk about self-awareness. We talk later. So similar the IDMP works by regulation of the medicine of the central and autonomic nervous system together. This way they work faster. So this is a summary figure we published two years, uh, three years ago. We talk about that even though you sit down there, you try to regulate yourself, relax and in a calm state, you are s you, there are so many brain regions involved in this simple process related to the attention control, emotion regulation, self-awareness. Then you build this new experience into the reward center, so you reinforce the new behavior, so you will do automatically. So right now, we move to the translational work. So not in health, also in education. So I think I cannot cover everything. So the red part is because we have a project or completed project. I'll show you something, two examples. So number one, I will show you the smoking because the smoking actually is very hard to quit. So in the, in the college, so national survey, including our university, yeah, we have a 40,000 students, so we find over 50% students use ATC. What means ATC? A, alcohol, T, tobacco, C, cannabis, or marijuana. So over 50% use at least a two or three, very high. You know the ATC actually is a daily drug. You use, they can sensitize this person, the user, to use heroin, to use cocaine, to use methamphetamine, <coughs> go even further. But people don't pay attention. So smoking is really hard. So usually in the clinical, we want people to have a motivation, strong motivation, then we think they are ready. Without the motivation, without intention, we think it's impossible. But this study challenged this view. So this our publication paper, we only use 10 sessions, five hours, because smoker, students, student smoker only can tolerate five hours, 10 sessions. But health student tolerate 20 sessions. So beginning you'll find so they are different. So behavior we call the deficit in self-control. So we use the same RCT design in smoker, non-smoker. We recruit students without uh, telling them our goal. Just ask if you feel stress in the school, you just join us. We never talk smoking, quitting. Never talk alcohol, never talk cannabis. So this suppose here to improve attention, reduce stress. So then <coughs> we measure behavior, measure brain, 
So after 10 sessions, we find, I'll show you. So this is the IBM key. This is the realization training. So before post intervention, just uh, 10 sessions. So significantly reduced is, but RT, there are fewer works, but in general, statistically, not work. So we find a 60% reduction after only 10 sessions, including the cooling and the substance use. So then we scan the brain. Before intervention, we find smokers show the deficit, low activity here before training compared to non-smoker because they have a deficit in self-control. However, after training, improved only in the IBMT group, not reaction. There are fun parts here. So talk about spontaneous behavior change. So smoker are not aware of their behavior change. Why I propose this idea? Because we measure smokers in the self-report, clinical interview, so we face them, they fill that questionnaire. We also use objective markers, like a smoker use a single monitor to measure their air distribution in the lung. If they smoke, they show different. Not smoke, they show lower. So we find that their self-report result is inconsistent with objective markers. Objective markers are more accurate. So we interview every participant. I remember one subject, very clear, called Tommy. So Tommy was a heavy smoker. One pack per day, you need lots of money for undergrad, right? One pack. So morning pack, evening, nothing, out. But from, from the objective markers, they show zero. It means he still he should keep one pack in the evening, but a several report already showed nothing, no change. It means zero. We check Tommy immediately in the evening. Then we find Tommy realized, oh my goodness, I still have a one unit pack tobacco in my pocket, but I was not aware of the change. Then we said, Tommy, what what, what are you feeling? He said, okay, I see more money for more cigarettes. <laughs> this is the response. Yeah, in other words, he did not have any intention, interest to quit smoking. But why spontaneous behavior change happen? So there is something we're talking about, uh, the implicit process and a conscious change in addiction behavior. So there is something happen we are not aware. We don't fully understand the story, but we are going to further investigate. So in reality, actually, we use lots of wrong policy, wrong strategy to ask people to quit smoking, to stop substance use. I'll give you an example. There is a very famous phenomenon in psychology called a white bear. Fun, lots of fun. Five seconds. Would you like to follow me? Please close your eyes this moment. Close your eyes. Please. Close your eyes. Follow my instruction. Do not think why the bear, the animal. Do not think of why the bear. Control your mind. Do not think your why the bear. OK, open your eyes, please. Some people are laughing. So when you try to suppress this idea, do not think of white bear, full of white bear <laughs> in the mind. <laughs> huh? If you push the user, push your kids that they do that, surprise, they will try it. Huh? So in year with the rest of our collaborators, so they put a sign on the hallway, stop smoking, smoking is bad. So after the sign, smoking rate increased because the hallway every day around 800 students pass by. So surprise the idea actually is trigger the craving. You want to hide the surprise, you put more attention, more focus to the idea, right? So people say, don't, don't, don't do wrong, don't do, don't do wrong. So you repeat it, actually you emphasize. So suppression, 
has been used in the mood disorder, depression, anxiety, PTSD, and many, many situations. So this idea, this strategy really need to be changed. Okay, so we have the ability of self neuroplasticity that could change behavior and habit. But I do think combining with other methods may be more effective. Even though we show many, many positive findings, it doesn't mean this method fit everybody. Okay, so the last example, talking about anxiety, depression, similar design, I just show the result. So before, so they show the deficit, depression and healthy control, you need a longer time, right, to solve the conflict for the depression patient. Then, after that 10 session, you find they improve the pre longer time, then post the shorter time for depression patient. So the other like emotion the same. So I will not talk, I show the brain. So you find depression brain show a lot of a global decrease in self-control, memory, behavior. This is why they have a problem in daily life after training significant inputs globally. Still there's something here, right? So this will work for the longer intervention. Anyway, so we find until a single cortex self-control center could be an intervention target for this mood disorder and other disorder. So I'm going to summary here. So already I will talk about that part, but I'll show you this one, uh, the last part. If you want to see the talk, the full talk, then I actually have the interview medicine lecture, so I have that one online. So you want to download the paper before the study, you want to further read in the book, still fine. The take home message, take home message I think you can read by yourself, just give you an idea. So we show everybody has capacity to self-healing, to self-rehab. So patient and the physician need to work together to have uh, integrated health. Thank you for attention. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're going to name the QA, right? Okay. Yeah, any question? It doesn't work? There we go. Thank you, Professor Tang, for a very nice presentation of an important subject. I, uh, again, uh, this is music to my ears. One question I have, or one comment or observation is, in much of the work in mindfulness, it seems to me that uh, it's not exactly a criticism, but a, a, an opportunity, I think, that the focus tends to be on an individual, whereas human beings are profoundly social. And I, I wonder if there is an opportunity to do work on interpersonal mindfulness. Interpersonal, meaning a group setting? Or, or at least a dyadic, two people, three people, whatever. I, 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 my point is that mindfulness, as it's currently pursued, tends to focus on the individual, but so much of our life and attention <coughs> is actually thinking about how others think about us. And if we could get at that. It's just a, a suggestion. But wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, actually, it's a very good point. Um, I didn't mention that part. So mindfulness is not everything, just the one of the strategy. So some people are good at, some people just love the exercise. Like I have been a long distance runner, I enjoy. Yeah, so mindfulness practice 
I think it's, uh, it's one tool in the overloaded information world. So we are, when, we, when we fill up the idea, full of the thought, full of the workload, it may give you some space. But uh, it is a very insightful idea because we are social. We are social animal. So mindfulness is focused on the in person, in person, yeah. So if they could if they contribute to the social relationship, social interaction, there are several studies recently. So when, when, when a person practices the mindfulness or similar mindfulness practice, so they need a high level of self-awareness. They are aware of their emotion, aware of their attention, aware of their thinking, aware of their sensation. So then after practice in daily life, they carry over this sensitivity to the people, to the relationship. So they even develop a mindfulness marriage therapy mindfulness eating, mindfulness working, whatever they have. So I will, I will think in the future, more people are mindful. They are more aware of their partner's emotion state. They may have a more time, more, more good time to talk some tough issue. For me, for myself, I, I benefit. So without mindfulness, so I just follow my agenda to do things. So I seldom consider the environmental factor. But right now, I'm so open-minded to sensitive, so I try to aware the subtle signal in the society. Thank you. Wonderful question. Thank you so much for that talk. Um, and isn't it interesting that the two psychiatrists have the first comments? I wonder if you could comment on what you think the core mechanism is. So you've got this psychological intervention, and it's affecting brain plasticity. So it's something happening at a neuroanatomic, neurophysiologic level. What do you think the mechanism of action is in that alteration? So you ask the question, the core mechanism underlying this change in the effect, right? Especially in the neural level, right? Yeah, um, so far, we found a lot of evidence, right, from behavior, from physiology, from the brain. It's like a question, chicken or egg, right? So we ask the question, okay, so if I do exercise, I do exercise, lots of studies show I do exercise, my motor sensation related region, the brain region can change because I practice. So when I sit down here, actually I don't have any posture, right? I only pay attention to myself and I try to balance my mind wandering and mindfulness state. So it's uh, involved the attention and self-control practice. You practice attention self-control momentarily, right? You engage a certain brain region. In the animal work, so if pay attention, group of neurons will fire strongly. So I will interpret one possibility that they pay attention, so they stimulate the group of neurons. So they pay attention to true self-control, so they are so they related to certain group of neurons in related to self-control region. So this kind of a replication, replicated practice may change something. This is one possibility. Another thing I talk about from attention, right? Another possibility, so it's the called experience-dependent neuroplasticity. So every day we talk to people, we engage in social group. It's an experience. We learn new set of experience. So this experience induces the plasticity all the day. So this kind of training may just focus on the attention and the self-control related experience. But the bottom line, we are not fully understanding the mechanism. Even though we show, okay, axon density change, they grow, right? The white fiber grow from this part to that part. Myelination change. But we still don't know what's the direct drive to influence axon and the melanation. Yeah. 
So just to continue on this theme, uh, how long are these left back lasting? Are these permanent changes in brain function, brain in physiology, or is it reversible? Sorry, I lost the first part. So how long do these effects last? Uh, lasting effect, yeah, how long? It's, uh, it's no question talking about the important part. So if a participant practice five session, only five short, so we follow them. So in average participant, let's say the young adults, college age students, so they carry, they can last around a month, five session. If they go 10 session, still short, 20 to 30 minutes per session. So 10 session may go to two to three months, some longer. If they go to 20 session, it's the threshold. It takes longer because after 10 session, so the brain structure change. They last a little bit longer. Unfortunately, we <laughs> we did not get the undergrad student in the U.S. <laughs> who are willing to go practice over 20 session. <laughs> no, but we found in Asia, so their student dedicate <laughs> go longer. I'm not a criticized, <laughs> just on <all> data. <laughs> uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, since you've begun your work in this area, have, um, on any nation's healthcare system, have you noticed any aspect of the system that's begun implementing the aspect of mindfulness in healthcare providers treating for the patients? And if so, how do you see any possibilities of implementing this in this country's system? Um, I heard part of, yeah, saying the echo, but I, I got a point, if I understand it correctly, you ask how you handle the resistance in implementation, right, in patient population. And uh, this question, right? You got a second one, right? Oh, what country is more resistant? What, uh, have you noticed, or what nation's healthcare system have you noticed implementing this aspect of healthcare? Okay, which country? Okay, okay. So uh, we find that anything, any intervention, any training, even though any food, so there are, there are people who like it, who opposite, right? Object, whatever. So, so people have their own mindset. People have own belief, so they decide that this one they love or they hate. So we do find resistance for some people. So like the undergrad student, usually is open. They even don't know what a mindfulness is. So we explain. So even the young children, we train four and a half years old, they they don't know the words. Yeah, they still find resistance. So. It was born to get something, yeah. They don't like it. So how to handle, in general, our method, we find around 80 to 85%. So people accept it. But after our explanation, the scientific research actually is the changing the mindset, changing their belief, right? So they got in. Another 15% people, so they just said, I can, I can be in your session, I got a payment, or I don't get a payment, but I don't like it. So we encourage you to go to the exercise, go to other method. So as I, far as I know, UK last year started national uh, policy. They include the mindfulness therapy into the medical care system. Yeah, UK. So in the US, our country, I think several states are thinking I think maybe some insurance company in certain state, they can cover part of, I don't know. But I really found a responder, non-responder, we can use behavior, physiology, brain imaging, or even genetic data to predict how they respond, or they may be non-responder, yeah. Do you have any questions for us? No questions, Lebanon? Thank you. I'm curious.
Jesus. into all your practice, such as IBMT. And okay. Would it be helpful? I will, a, 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 I will repeat the question. So uh, have I used the AI into the training, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, I've been thinking. I've been thinking because when we deliver the training, you can do on-site, we can do online. But I would love to have an active avatar to talk to you in my will. So I think I'm going to try it, even though so far I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you. <laughs> OK, I still stay here, or OK? <laughs> okay. Stay right here. Okay, stay right here. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Thank you, Al. If you could just be a little quiet for another minute or two as we express formal gratitude to Professor Tang by memorializing his name on the plaque for our lectures, as well as this. Certificate Thank you. And some gifts for our esteemed colleague. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. And just for the record, there is no ATC in any of the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again.